Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, November 21, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? The first thing we do is get our assessment from the daily chart. Where are they? Did they do anything material today? Where does the tape indicate price is headed next? Well, today we had what's called an inside day. After what? After yesterday having a decent size up day heading to where? The downsloping trend line that we've been discussing long before they got there. They hit it pretty much on the nose, spiked it by a few pennies as we can see yesterday. And here they are trading underneath that trend line, basically treading water in a bearish, flaggish, wedgish kind of position all day long from the gap down this morning after reaching said trend line. How do you like them apples as a side note? Speaking of side notes, this is likely the last video of the week unless something absolutely crazy happens on Wednesday and or Friday. If it's more of the same like today, there's no reason with no material change to the tape. Let's get back to the daily assessment. They're above all the moving averages. The trend is your friend. That's a bullish signal, whether it's on a daily, whether it's on a weekly chart, Whether it's on a monthly chart, she's above all the moving averages. The trend is your friend. That's the big picture assessment. However, she is a little far extended from where? Home base. What's home base? The 20 period moving average. Now the 20 period moving average is the red sloping trend line on my chart and therefore it is sloping upward. So if the market misses market, eat some time off the clock for a few days, the 20 period moving average each and every day will have a chance to creep up toward price, working off some of the quote unquote, these are air quotes, overbought condition. The reason I put air quotes around the overbought condition business is because there's no measurement for that term. We don't know exactly what makes the market overbought, how far overbought it can be. It's a generic term made up out of whole cloth. Far extended in either direction from home base is a market that, and we'll use the term in this case because it's above, overbought. It's a generic term. It's too far, too fast. Generally speaking, they're not going to get too far away from home base before letting home base have a chance to catch up to price price pulls back to home base, little bit of both, and that works off some of the current condition. Can they push higher? Absolutely. What happens if they get above the trend line? There's a gap just above the trend line. Officially, the closing price here is 456.48. Now you can see a blue trend line above the downsloping trend line, which is black at 456.48. So we could get a spike the recent high, reach the unfilled gap, unfinished business, and have a reaction from that gap. But think about where they are at that point in time. They're flirting with these highs over here. That happens to be from this past July, this summer. What we can say is there's a lot of overhead resistance, A, at the downsloping trend line, which they already hit, B, the gap slightly above, and C, The former highs and the official high is 459.44. So we know that there's overhead resistance between yesterday's high and 459.44. That's not necessarily helpful from an intraday perspective. It's helpful from a bigger picture perspective. We refine the numbers from an intraday perspective for traders in the live room and inside the numbers. Net net, no material change today in the market. Yesterday hit a trend line, an important place. Today was a very minor pullback operation on a turnaround Tuesday. No big deal, absolutely garden variety. Now we do have NVIDIA earnings after the bell today. NVIDIA comes out a few minutes from the point in which I'm making this video. And if NVIDIA moves large, whether it's up or down, 
it can impact the overall market, not every single stock, but it can impact the direction of the Qs. It can impact several sectors in the SPY, thus the overall index, the Dow, everything. It can be either a drag or a catalyst for an excuse to goose the tape during Thanksgiving holiday week. By the way, speaking of inside the numbers a moment ago, let's go through some of the commentary. Was there a trade today? Did anybody make money? If you did, post it under the video, whether you are an inside the number member or a live room member. Either way, let's hear what you thought about the commentary in a slow tape. Was there a trade today? Did you take advantage of it? It was turnaround Tuesday. If there was going to be a bull case, they would have to get above yesterday's close. They never did that, so we'll leave that be. The flip side situation would be a first support number around 453.70. Now, this comes into play later, but they opened below. So if they're opening below this, what's the next place? Below on candle closes, or just below for that matter, activates the next leg down and a test of 452.65. Keep that number in the back of your mind. Put it on the burner. We'll do some more stuff in a real-time situation. Remember the service announcement. We're done for the week. It was a two-day week. I'm going on holiday. Unless something crazy happens, I'll make a video. I need a break. So does everybody else. It's healthy to do so. 9 o'clock, here's the setup. 452.65 down to 452 is a zone of support where they should bounce back in the other direction. We have the just-in-caser in case they get below, but that was the place for the morning trade. The pullback and then the bounce back in the other direction. The markets were in slow motion today, but look what happened. They come down and they hover over the first place, 452.65. So when they do this, we had traders in the room saying, well, they're coming up short and they're bouncing, so I'm going to play the fiddle over here and take some scalps. And we had plenty of traders doing that, but they also knew, and we talked about it in real time, before it happened, as it was happening in the live room, the fact that they ran over it for a while, a period of time, created a bearish flaggish situation. And then we would expect them to come through that number deeper into the zone and potentially down to the other end of the zone, which is only about 50, 60 cents away, 65 cents away for 52 even. So what did they do? Just that. They came in. They spiked it by just a penny or so. You can see here the low in this candle, 451.96, right back to 452.65. And then they took off into the end of the day. They gave everybody the trade in slow motion. That was the morning setup. It was somewhat of an all-day sucker as it took a while. But that's what you get in a light volume, low participation holiday week. You take the market at face value. We can only trade the market that's in front of us, not the one we would like it to be. Nice trade. Pause the video. Read the notes, go back to the chart, and double-check the work. It's all in here. You'll see it over and over and over again. Then we had targets on the way back up, just as we do each and every day. Whether traders realize it or not, there's about one of a small bucket full of trades that we take over and over and over again. They constitute the makeup of the package of morning trades that we're looking for each and every day. Way more often than not, the market's going to give us a morning trade. And way more often than not, we're going to be right more than they're wrong. Some will be wrong. I get some stuff wrong just like everybody else. I can't bat a thousand. It's impossible. We're going to get way more right than we do wrong. That's the way it works inside the numbers and in the live room. Take it at face value. We had a little bit of a list at Stocks on the Move today. We're going to take a look at two out of the five, the ones that hit their price objectives or entry objectives. The other ones did not. They're off the board. We'll take a look working from the bottom today, Best Buy, TCOM, and KSS. Lowe's and VMware didn't hit their entry targets. They're off the board. They're what we call no trades. 
Before we do that, NVIDIA is out with earnings. We can take a look. They're getting absolutely crushed at the open, meaning the open of when the stock opened back up after earnings. That doesn't mean anything for where it's going to be five minutes from the point in which we're looking at it or by tomorrow morning or by 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. This is the first initial move, which was pretty good. It was about 30 bucks, give or take. I believe we talked in the live room today. Some traders had the implied move at around 7%. It can be a driving force or a component or a condition that causes the market to go in one direction or another or an excuse, however you want to look at it. Either way, there goes an NVIDIA bounce. Do we have one of those situations where the initial move is the incorrect move or do we see more downside as the after hours matures We'll see. Doesn't make any difference for now. Maybe we'll get a trade from stocks on the move tomorrow morning or just a trade or two in the live room. There are traders who do trade NVIDIA each and every day and we're in the live room. So we look at it each and every day. We'll start with TCOM from stocks on the move and it opened below. This was the third number. It opened below the third number. It melted down as the opening bell got closer and closer. And therefore, it was just off the board, I didn't have the secondary spots prepared, so therefore it's just a no trade. How about Kohl's, KSS, first number, open below, it's off the board, that's the way you do it. Activates the second number, they found support just below the second number, bounced right back, working their way back to the first number. If you painted by the numbers, you got your trade as an average cost between the two. Base hits put you in the Hall of Fame, not all are going to be whoppers. Some will be whoppers, like case in point, Best Buy today, BBY, came into the number, spiked it by a little bit, had a rocket ride, rip-roaring rally back in the other direction all day long. You never know which ones are going to give you the rocket ride. That's why we have to have a process. We talked about this in detail in the live room today. Whether it's swing trading, whether it's scalp trading, day trading, whatever it is, you have to have a process to employ to be successful. You can't jump around and cherry pick, for example, when you're going to have more of a position size, when you're going to pick and choose which numbers you take and which you don't, when you're going to exit, how much profit you're going to take. You have to have a process in order to be successful long term in this business. We have a process. I teach a process because once again, you never know which ones are going to give you the rocket ride. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Well, they never did get back into the moving averages just yet, but what they are doing is eating time off the clock after getting or completing the spike into the moving averages, but staying above the neckline of the inverse head and shoulders pattern, eating time off the clock is not bearish, it's just bullish. They're just building energy to make the next move higher. Now, the flip side is if in fact they get below and close daily, not an hour, not a five minute chart, but daily below that neckline, then guess what? The inverse head and shoulders pattern is officially what? It's off the table. Doesn't mean price can't go higher. It means the pattern from a textbook TV standpoint is off the table. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Buttigieg's crew, what are they doing? They're eating time off the clock above the 200 period moving average. Nothing more, nothing less. No change from yesterday. They were up about 15 points today. That's one-tenth of 1%. 1 no material change. We can certainly move it along. What about the Q people? How about an inside day? What does that mean? Nothing. They hit an important place yesterday. The high yesterday was 391.41 against 391.20, which was my number. And they're pulling back from completing the important place. That's it. No more, no less. It's not a decline. It's not a sell-off. It's a pullback slash reaction from completing the important place. No more, no less. Take it at face value. The tape is bullish, but yet, just like the spiders, they are far extended from home base. Home base is up sloping. It's crossing over the 100 period moving average. There's nothing bearish on this tape, but can the markets pull back? Should they pull back? Is it normal to pull back? 
all those things, the answer is yes. That doesn't mean it will, but it can, it should, normally they do. What about the financial sector looking at the XLF? Any material change from yesterday? No, they were basically flat from yesterday, therefore no material change. They're bullish, far extended from home base, just like the other markets. They will pull back. The question is, just like other markets, from where? From yesterday or from some other point in time at a higher price? We don't know the answer. What we do know is where important places are, where important numbers are, and when they get there, they generally have a reaction in the other direction. And by the way, harken back to a few minutes ago, you never know which ones are going to give you the rocket ride in either direction. It's all part of the process of how this works. We take emotions out of it. We take guesswork out of it. We use data. We use logic. We use numbers and common sense. That's a pretty good package right there. What about the semiconductor space? Well, a lot's going to hinge on NVIDIA. Let's take another look over there. It's fast forward a few minutes from the last time we looked at NVIDIA. Nothing doing. They're at 495 Closing price today, $499.94. So they're not moving all that much. They did move, but they're not moving now. So we'll see what happens in the morning, whether or not we get a trade and a pull on the rest of the tape. Big picture, nothing wrong with the semis. Again, just like the other markets, many of them that we looked at extended from home base. Home base is up sloping. Eat some time off the clock, come down a little bit, reset the tape. There's nothing bearish here. A pullback in an uptrend is normal. Look at this move. You're going to have a pullback operation. That's just the way the market works. But above all the moving averages, the trend is your friend each and every time. They're above all the moving averages. We've got new highs, a spike of the high, come back a little bit to run some tests. That's normal garden variety stuff for now. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I am David Frost my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.